it's useful to label something that is clearly an issue for so many Australians. It's important to have a name for it, talk about it and research it. We're not there yet to scrap it. Nada, this research done in Queensland involved about 5,000 participants and it showed that you're no more likely to get persistent symptoms after COVID than you are with any other respiratory viruses. Now, while the Queensland Chief Health Officer said he believes the symptoms are real, he also said that the term long COVID can make people hypervigilant, he believes, and he says that can be harmful to recovery. Do you agree with that? I completely disagree. I think the the research is not strong enough. 5,000 people is not enough to make a conclusion like that. And the second is hypervigilance is, is, is incredibly important for my well-being. Other people are not vigilant anymore. People are walking around sick. Kids are going to school with fevers. I have to remain hypervigilant because if I get COVID again, it does knock me around. I've had it four times and long COVID symptoms flare up every single time like clockwork. It has a huge impact on my quality of life, my family's life. It's extremely disruptive. And I know that I'm accumulating medical conditions with every infection I get because that's my list. You may not think this is important, but it mostly affects women. And the peaks are affecting women more than others. There's research to support that during peaks of COVID, it's women that experience infections the most and long COVID affects women the most. So for me, I'm not willing to entertain that this is me just being over vigilant or too frightened. Um, this is real for me. Do you think the term long COVID makes a difference to how the sufferer is treated, whether that's um, in the health system and by medical professionals or also by their workplace or their friends and family? I think for those who have had experiences or have known someone with long COVID will empathise immediately. For others, they don't believe it's real. They don't know what it is. It's not very well described in the medical profession as to specifically what it is. And so that comes with a paralysis because the term itself doesn't reflect the pathology, the underlying mechanism. So there's been a push in the medical profession to change the name to long-term COVID complications or post-COVID sequelae. Whatever you call it, you need to call it something to validate the experience of the patient you're seeing, to give them the agency and the empowerment to deal with their treatment and their disease. Nothing in medicine is unlabeled and nothing unlabeled gets treated.